Hi everyone, so this is part two of the custom shader patch settings tutorial. Now if you've not seen the first one, do check that out on the channel. This one's a little bit different in that I've added more rendering stats so you can see the main graphical effects side by side. And I've also shown you much more comparisons between some of the effects being on or off. As ever, if you do like the video, click on that like button, really helps me out. And if you do like the channel, well, it'd be great to have you on board. So click on that subscribe button. Let's get straight into it then. Hi guys, so in the last video on part one, we actually got up to DXGI. So we're gonna go from extra effects today all the way down to neck effects, which is the middle section. Now there are quite a lot of graphical changes that we can make in this section. So I've listened to some of your comments and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put some render stats up on the screen and I'm gonna give you some side-by-side -side video comparisons of what the changes actually do, not only to your frames per second, but the quality. One of the first things I do want to show you though is the render stat difference in using different post-processing filters. So as you remember in one of my other custom shader patch videos, you can actually choose Sol or Sol Extra. And I've also given a comparison of a recent um, post-processing filter that I downloaded, installed and gave a video on, which was the clutch filter. Now just about the clutch filter, this is the older version. I am gonna do a new video on the new clutch post-processing filter with Sol 2.0 but I just want to give you a comparison of all three of these next to each other just to show you the difference in frames per second and quality. So let's fire that up and I'll just show you these side by side to begin with. Straight away looking at these three post-processing filters you can see there's a difference in quality. The Sol Extra and the Sol Standard post-processing filters there's two to three frames per second difference for me on my rig. The clutch filter well, that's knocking about 20 off, but that's to do with optimization, I think. So do wait for the new video on that. So let's move on to the next section, which is extra effects. So looking at this straight away, you'll see there are a lot of options here, but don't be too concerned about all these options because effectively what we need to do is read what it says at the top. So add an option for secondary rendering pass, allowing to use more visual effects. For now, only works for single screen without VR with post-processing enabled. Also doesn't work if AC's motion blur is enabled. So there's a couple of things right off the bat here that we need to make sure that they are not enabled. So that is, if you're gonna have motion blur on, then I would just deactivate this. Also, if you're gonna be running VR, as it says here, deactivate it. Now, I only run a single screen too when I'm playing a set of Corsa, so that's why I have this active. So what I'm gonna do now is just show you a video of side by side what these two um, look like when you've got this activated and deactivated. And I think you'll see that there's very little difference, but obviously the quality is better with this activated. So I'll show that now. First up then is full effects. Now on both of these videos, I've not changed any other settings apart from the extra effect setting extension. So this one, the quality looks fantastic. This is how I would expect my set Corsa to look. On the no effects one, it looks a little bit different. I think it's a little bit duller. Some of the effects obviously do make a visual difference. I'm probably saving about four to five frames per second on this second piece of gameplay. So for my rig, I'm running around 100 frames per second. That means that I'll leave this on. So after watching that video, if you do decide that you want to adjust some of these, so keep it active, but actually change some of the bottom ones here. So for instance, if you want to choose the Intel piece or you want to choose the Nvidia piece, I have an Nvidia video card, so that's the one I've chosen. Um, there's light bounce emulation here, um, volumetric headlights, and some of these key ones at the bottom here are um, to do with heat distortion and fog blur etc and distance blur so do adjust these and just try running those side by side to see what kind of frames per second impact it has i think this is quite negligible so i think if you've got any kind of high mid to high end video card that you should have this um, active unless of course you're wanting to use motion blur or you're using vr then i would certainly turn this off if you are using vr okay let's move on to the next one then so the fake shadow effects actually does what it says on the tin, and that is that it creates shadows underneath the car if the car leaves the ground. 
So it's only a small thing, but the shadows get smaller, more blurred and more transparent the higher that the car jumps. So we've all been on the Neuschleife and we know that your car can jump and there's other tracks and certain cars that you can get the car to jump and it's a lot of fun. So if you do want this on, again, click on active and I'll just show you here on the right hand side of the screen what it actually looks like when the car is leaving the ground. And as you can see, the shadow gets smaller and more transparent as the higher that the car is actually off the ground. Okay, let's look on to FFB tweaks. So this is your force feedback tweaks. Um, and I think the main thing on this screen is to make sure that if you are using um, any kind of steering wheel with force feedback, I've got a G29 at the moment, is to make sure that these three are all active. This will make a significant difference. Of course, do try it, you can switch these off and just try your force feedback on a, a game of a set of course and to see if you like that feel better. Uh, but actually these are the three that are kind of on by default um, and I trust that these effects are actually gonna give you a different uh, feel for your steering wheel. So definitely keep those on. These bottom ones here, I wouldn't touch any of those unless you've got a specific requirement to. But again, all of these settings, you can't really break anything by trying and moving some of these sliders. Um, but entirely up to you, see how the game feels for you. The next one then is freer camera. So freer camera is the free camera mode that you, lets you explore outside of the car. So this is not for when you're playing the main game. It's nothing to do with the chase cam, etc. This is to do with you pressing your F7 button and then being able to move around the car or the actual track itself and explore that, especially for taking screenshots. I use it extensively for screenshots and for putting my own cameras down for replays. So I'm just gonna show you quickly how that works. Here I am then, I'm outside of the car, I've pressed F7. Now if I was to hold the right mouse button down and move the cursor around, that will actually move the camera so you can adjust the pitch and where the camera is. You can also zoom in and out by pressing the forward back and then left and right with the left and right cursor keys. If you hold the shift down, you will move slower, as you can see here, so you can adjust where the camera is gonna be. And if you were to press the control key and move forward, back, left or right, that moves very quickly. Something else you can also do that is very useful is change the focus of the camera. So as you can see here, I'm moving around the screen and I'm holding the control button down and then left click in. That will actually change where the camera focuses. So for me, I would keep all of these active. I don't see any impact of, um, certainly performance impact of having these on. And again, unless you've got a very specific call out here on why you would need to change any of these, I would just keep them all as standard. So the next section is graphic adjustments. So fixes depth fighting artifacts, increases rendering distance, optionally replaces FXAA by SMAA, increases motion blur, reduces tiling in textures of specific shaders. So I have this active. There are a number of different areas here that you can change. But what I've done here, I've just put some gameplay video of the same replay with this on and then with it off. And that's got the rendering stats on as well. So let's just run through that. As before then, all the other graphical settings are exactly the same. I've just changed the graphical adjustment extension to be on or off. So this is with graphical adjustments. Now, looking at both of these um, different pieces of gameplay on the same replay with everything else exactly the same, I'm probably losing about two to three frames per second by having this on. So again, for my rig, it makes perfect sense for me to keep this on, but you may need to switch some of these off depending on the power of your rig, video card, processor, etc. So these are all personal choices for you to make based on the quality of the gameplay that you want to see. Moving on to the next section then, we have grass effects. So this is actually one of my favorites. Now, a call out on this straight away is that if you are running modded tracks or Kunos tracks, you will get different effects on this. So I've noticed on some of the modded tracks that I've got, switching it on or off doesn't really make much difference. Certainly on a lot of the Kunos tracks and some modded tracks, it does make a big difference. So I'm gonna show you a side-by-side -side comparison here and again with the rendering stats on what this does. So if you were to switch everything off, 
you will see that on one of these um, videos and if you would leave everything on as it is now and I have actually got the quality on very high you will again see the rendering stats and that running side by side so let's take a look at that. With all the grass effects on maximum this looks great this is how I run the game and actually this gives me better performance if I'm using the standard grass which is this grass which I think looks worse and actually I lose four or five frames per second. The next section is GUI or graphical user interface. So I have this active, but what I'm going to do is just talk you through for a moment what this actually does on the game. So this is from the latest custom shader patches, and I think it makes it really a lot more useful how you use this sidebar. So I know a lot of you have asked me questions about this sidebar, so let me just talk you through how the sidebar works and how you can just pin different things on the side of the sidebar now to make them really easily accessible. Here we are then, we're in the drive menu and I'm moving my mouse cursor over to the right and as you can see here, the top section is all the apps that you've got installed and ticked within Custom Shader Patch. You've then got AC apps and there's all sorts of different things in there that you can click on any of these and bring them on the screen at any time. You've then got developer apps and you've got CSP apps at the bottom. So, so many of these different options that you can bring up and while you're in Drive Menu, actually adjust what the game is doing. Let's try out then one of these apps and see how this works fully in game. Now this is really cool on the post processing filter if you've not done this before. What you can do is you can bring it up on screen and as you can see there I am running Soul Extra but you can flick through the different post processing filters and see live how that will actually look on game which is very cool. You can see here I've got a number of different post processing filters installed but you can also bring up your render stats as well so you can see how this actually changes your um, different rendering stats and your frames per second live in game. So what we'll do then, we'll put it back to um, the Soul Extra which I tend to run on now, especially on Soul 2.0 and what we'll do is we'll actually remove these um, from the main screen. So if we move over to the right hand side we can actually now just click on them on the menu and they're still stuck on the sidebar for ease of access but they're off the main screen now, that's really cool. So let's move on to lighting effects. So this adds various car lights, track lights, casted light, not emissive stuff, as well as dynamic ambient colour. So this is basically where Custom Shader Patch all started and what this is going to do is, this is going to add more visual features, more visual lighting effects at night time. And there are a number of sliders here that you can change. Um, one of the things that I have changed is enable lighting reflections. Again, all of this could give you some performance degradation, but if you've got the render stats up, you'll be able to see what that kind of impact is. And the best way to do that, guys, is just to film a replay, save it, and then change these stats and keep playing the replay when you've got the different stats and the different settings changed, and you will see then what your render will look like. So. A lot of these um, are really down to personal preference. I know uh, a couple of sliders that people do change is the headlight wideness. And again, if you're racing lots at night, you'll probably adjust that and see some impact on there. And also headlights on the interior, because if the headlights are shining into the car, that can change the way that the interior of the car looks. And depending on your graphics card and what kind of settings you've got on, that can look a little bit strange. So they're probably the two that I would look to change if you're gonna change anything. Okay, moving on to the Logitech G27. Now I have a G29, I think this setting still works for the G29. So this is the LED bar that's at the top of the steering wheel here and it's the way that actually works with the RPM of the car that you're driving. So you can change these a little bit and again it's entirely up to you if you want that active or not. If you've not got a G27 or G29 or a G920, I think that works in a similar way, then this is not something that you would actually use. And then the last one, just to move on to in this video, is neck effects. So I actually have this active at the moment, and this is a really, really cool um, part of Custom Shader Patch, and it is quite new. So what this is actually emulating is when you go around a corner in a car, if you're driving on the road normally, you would actually move your head to look where the apex is of the corner, or to look around the corner, or you would move your head depending on which way the car was actually turning. 
this actually emulates that so when you have this active you as you go around a corner as you can see in this screenshot here you will your head will move to the left hand side if it's a left hand corner and you will naturally look down to the apex or the exit of the corner in the standard mode on the standard uh, car mode without this you, it's all set in 2d so you will just be looking straight ahead all the time and by the way there is nothing wrong with that this neck effects though just gives you a little bit more realism and the way that you would actually drive the car in real life so if you like it's a bit like a 2d vr kind of view now what i'm going to do is show you the same replay and i'm driving the tesla in this replay just to show you how these look side by sides and it's a very subtle difference with all the standard activated settings here but there are a number of settings that you can change quite a lot here to um, give you a more um, a more accentuated version of this if that's what you wish to do now what I am going to do guys um, I am going to do a, a video just on neck effects because there are so many sliders and so many ways that you can change this so look out for that in the future and I'll put something together so I can talk you through this in more detail but let's take a look at the videos just to show you how this would work side by side here we are then again in Italy but this time in the Tesla Model 3 Mountain Pass Performance so yes, this is electric. There is no engine sound if you think it's missing. Now, as you can see, as I'm going around the corners here, and I'm using keyboard, by the way, guys, just for this tutorial video, you can see as I go around the corner, the 2D aspect of how you look through the windscreen doesn't change. So if you use the wing mirror for reference, you can see that it doesn't change at all. Let's try this then with a new neck effects extension on. Wow, pretty cool. So as you move to the right or to the left, you can see that your eyes in the game follow where the corner is not only is it turning left or right but it's also tilting up or down and I know there are settings within neck effects where you can change all the g-force settings and also then how strong the feeling of speed is as you go in and out of these corners pretty cool and by the way guys I'm loving this Tesla model this is off Assetto land and I will drop the links in the description below so guys, that's all the sections that I'm going to cover in this video. So then the next video, part three, which will be the last part, I'm going to go from new AI behavior all down to small tweaks. And that will release in the next seven days or so. As ever, guys, I really want to thank you for watching this video and I hope it's been useful. There are so many settings in CSP and really there's nothing to be afraid of in there and some of them have some really cool effects on them. So I hope I've helped you a little bit today. Remember, if you do want any more guides or tutorials on Assetto Corsa or more PC racing games, then do check out the channel. And if you do like the video, I would really appreciate you giving it a big thumbs up. That would really help me out. And if you are new here, it would be great to have you on board. Thank you for all your support and I'll see you guys very soon.